Hi everybody, Rob Redman here from Pariah Studios and welcome to this first Fusion Friday video. This is going to be a series of, of short tutorials um, showing you how to kind of jump straight into Fusion, learn how it works and make some fun projects with it. And we'll do things in a fairly progressive manner. So this first video is just going to be a how to kind of find your way around, how to add elements to a composition uh, and how you can then affect them and connect them up. So we will move on to doing things like particle systems and 3D work and motion graphics and visual effects and all that kind of stuff. And we will do compositing using some shot footage. Um, but for now, like I said, let's just kind of work our way around the software and see what we can do with it. So when you start up Fusion, uh, and this is Fusion 8. Uh, so if you've seen a previous version, you might notice a few very subtle differences. So they're mostly visual things. Um, so the, the, the interface is a slightly different color and things like that. Um, but you have four main panels. You have two viewers by default. We have our flow view, which is where all our nodes live. And this is where you do all the connecting and everything. And then we have our attributes and control panel over here. So the first thing that you want to really do is to get something in or to create something within Fusion uh, to work with. And to do this, we need a node. And there are various ways of working with nodes. And nodes are actually tools. Um, most people refer to them as nodes, but there is kind of a synonym. It doesn't matter. You can call them whatever you like. Um, but we're going to right click in our flow view. And you can see we have an add tool. And then we have a, a list of sub menus here with lots and lots of different nodes in, uh, lots of different tools. Uh, and some of these have subsections again, so we might go into the 3D and you can see there are lights, materials, textures, so on and so forth. Now for the most commonly used tools, you can see them up here. So we have loaders, savers, background. So let's add a background. And what that has done is it's popped up this node here or tool here. We have an input and we have an output and that's the red square. And if we have another node, that red square will be linked to the input of the other node. And that's how we work within Fusion. We're connecting nodes rather than layers. So this background node, if we want to actually see what it's doing, we can just flick it up into this view here. You can choose fit. And if we know what size we want this to be, we can put that in because Fusion is resolution independent. Uh, we can actually tell it what we want it to be. So if we come over to our attributes, we can see what we've got. We've got the controls for the color and we can make this a gradient. So let's do that. But before we choose the colors for the gradient, we're going to go to image and here we can set, let's say this is going to be a 1280 by 720 composition. So we know that that's going to fit in there fine. Uh, and if we go back to our color settings, uh, we're going to use a vertical gradient and the top, which is labeled here, we can just pick this or we can use the RGB sliders. That's fine too. And we'll give ourselves a uh, kind of a cherry color. Let's go for a, a saturated but deep cherry color like that. And we could do the same for the bottom, but I'm happy with that being black. Uh, now I want to add just some subtle noise to this. And you can see there are no controls for noise. So what we're going to do is we'll look at some other ways of accessing tools to see what we can add. Now, the quickest way is by contra pressing control in the spacebar, and then we can start typing in things like uh, noise. If I start typing that, you can see we've got a fast noise here. And um, there is one more way we can do this. We can come up to our bin, and here we can start looking at things like maybe a creator. And this is good because it gives you kind of a, a visual preview of what you're getting. So fast noise. So we're going to have this noise node. And if we want to, we can look at the noise node content separately in this viewer over here, or we can flick it up to there. So let's flick it over, let's press fit. Again, we'll go into image and we'll just set this to the same size, just so we're working with something that's going to sit over the top of our gradient nicely. Now you saw me there just flicking these by clicking, dragging and dropping over the viewer window. Um, now you can use little dots in here to choose what you're viewing and that's not a, that's an on off switch it's not a switching between the two so a black dot means that you're not seeing you are not seeing it and there's one for each side so white dot for seeing 
So you can see here, we've got a white dot in the left, which means we're seeing this in the left viewer, and a right, white dot in the right for the fast noise. So let's look at the attributes of this noise. Let's see what we can do with it. Now we've got it the right size. So if we come back to noise, we can see we have some simple controls, but they're very useful and very powerful. So we can add just a bit of detail. I'm going to decrease the brightness. And because this is a, an alpha noise, you can see the, but the default settings mean that we have kind of transparent areas, which is kind of what we want for this, this look that we're going for. Um, and we have a contrast, so we can make it a bit more stark if we want, or a bit more subtle. But what we're not seeing is this over the top of this. So what we could do is we could add what's called a merge. So if I hit control space and just type in merge, you can see we have a few things that have merge in the title, but the first one is what we want. So we have this. And this one you can see actually has a few more inputs. Uh, we have an output still, which is fine. Now, if you hover over a connection, we've got foreground and background. Now, we know we want this to be the background, so let's connect that to the yellow nodule there. And we'll take this one to there. And nothing has happened in, in our update here, and that's because nodes work on a node-by-node -node basis. So we need to flick that one into our view. And now you can see what we've got. And this is kind of what we were expecting. But if we go back to our fast noise and just make a few more additions, we can come in here and let's choose a different color for our color too. Let's go for kind of a, a, a fairly strong purple. So we have that here. And we also have controls for alpha. So before we could see it was transparent and we could see through certain areas. And that's because the alpha of color one is set to zero. If we want to only see these two colors of the noise or somewhere in between, we can use the alpha slider to control that as well. So we could make that maybe a bit more subtle or a little less subtle. I'm fairly happy with this. What I don't like about this though, is the fact that the noise is covering the entire area of our shot. I want to actually control where this falls by using a mask. So I'm going to go back to my fast noise and I could control and spacebar come in here and I could start typing in masks uh, and that kind of thing. But actually there is a, a quick way of doing it. With your node selected, let's just flick our noise into here. We have these two controls. We have a, a rectangular mask and a circular mask or an ellipse. So we'll use this one and we'll just click that in. And you can see a new node was made, which is connected to the, the mask input of our noise. Effect masks there, you see. If you hover over it, you see what it is. And if we click on that, we can do things like soften the edge. And we could change the border width. We could change the orientation. We can change, we're using the angle, so we could spin that around here. We can change the dimensions in the, the yeah, equivalent to the X and Y axis. And this is looking, you know, reasonably pretty good, actually. And you, there are different types of filter for the kind of softening of this uh, and you can only really tell this looking at the borders uh, and this is a it's a personal thing really it's, it's what fits in with your your project and uh, simple tools to invert it so if you want to have kind of a, a noisy vignette you could do that very simply let's just change this um, and you can make it solid there so I'm happy with this so far uh, this is looking pretty good, um, but there's one more thing, and I know this is a really basic example, um, and it's really meant for people that haven't used Fusion before, so apologies if you're an expert uh, and you're expecting something a, a little bit more advanced. Um, but this doesn't give us anything. We don't get anything from this. We can't export from this, even though this is what we want, and this might be our final result. We need to add a final node before we can do anything with it and get it as a kind of a movie file to our hard drive. And that's a save node. So you can see we can add a place for this to go. So let's just, I'm just gonna cancel that for now. We don't need to, I don't need to save this. So now we can flip that into there and this is gonna be our final saved render output. If I hit spacebar, nothing is happening. Uh, and by the way, this will 
feeds back very very quickly the the gpu acceleration and everything that you get with um fusion is pretty pretty impressive uh, if i go back to my fast noise we can go back to the noise and we have a control here for seethe and seethe rate uh, amongst other things like scale so we can change the scale and all of these are animatable let's just change the seethe rate hit space and you can see that we now have this noise which is kind of morphing from I, I guess it's probably from seed number to seed number. We can change the value using the slider there. If you want to speed this up, you can do just by dragging the slider to the right. Let's just start it off very, very slow. So this is a very gentle kind of pulsing. Let's just go back to the beginning of our timeline. I'm going to right click over the control here and choose animate. And then if I go to, let's say, frame 100, I'm gonna bring the seed rate right up and just right click on that set key. And if I go back to the beginning and press play, we should see that this seed rate, as we get closer to frame 100, speeds up. There we go. So that's a, a quick way of animating. It's really, really, really very easy. Uh, we could do the same with the, the detail and um, we could start at frame zero. We could animate this detail on so it gets more and more detail as we go through. So let's do that. Let's do similar around frame 100. Let's add our detail right into here. And I'll just set a keyframe for that. So now we should get faster and more detailed noise as we go through. There we go. Now, horrible, horrible animation but it's a good way of showing you how it all works and how it all fits together. So we're not gonna to touch any of the 3D things here. There's a, a really solid 3D workflow you can use within Fusion, um, but we'll look at that in a, a later date. Um, the last thing I want to show you here is if you want to get something in from an external package, uh, you can use various different tools. If you're looking at footage, then just use the loader, which is the LD button here. And you can see this will let you navigate your drives to find a, a file that you want. Uh, you can see here, that this has already added a, a merge so that we have this background that we've already built and it added a merge node because I had the fast noise selected when I chose the loader. And the loader lets you come in here and go to your import options, the format options and a file. It opens up the, the file dialog automatically, but if you need to get back to it, that's where you find it. And this is where you would load your footage. Uh, so for compositing reasons, that's a, a useful one to know. But this gives you a very basic overview of how to use Fusion, how to get started with nodes, how to connect them. Uh, if you want to disconnect, you can. You just drag them away like so. Uh, if you want to add a node in between two other nodes, um, you can, let's just break this chain. You can drag it and hold down Shift and you can see that the connecting line changes when you hold shift uh, to have the the blue and yellow segments and then when you let go that's now a part of the chain there of course you can always undo these things so that's been a little introduction of how to use uh, fusions tools and the, the the ui the last thing i'm going to just comment on before we finish this video is just moving around because nodal trees, these kind of schematic layouts can become quite large and moving around them is a doddle. And this works in all of the windows. So viewer windows and in the flow window, middle mouse button, and just drag around and you can see that you get a map in the top right hand corner uh, as you work, uh, just shows you an overview of the whole scene. If you want to zoom in, it's middle and left mouse button. And there we go, that lets you zoom in and out. If you're new to Fusion, I would suggest leaving open these icons. Um, you can collapse them down so you just get a name and the connectors. But it's quite useful while you're learning to navigate to keep a, a preview uh, in the, the actual node itself. Okay, so see you all next Friday when we'll actually start working on a, a proper project and I'll show you some proper workflows. But for now, experiment with the different nodes, connecting them all up, see how they all get together. Um, and if you haven't already, uh, grab a copy of Fusion 8. There's a free beta 
on the Black Magic website, uh, which I would suggest you download and follow along because then you'll be working on exactly the same pro uh, software as me. Okay, I'll see you next week. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.